Marina Kremen was a victim of sexual abuse from the age of five at Haute de la Garenne on Jersey. It all began when I was three months old. I'd been put in care because my parents um, didn't have um, accommodation back in Jersey for for um, children, really, parents with children that were not Jersey. You had to get qualifications um, in order to get housing. I think they call it council housing in, in England. But anyway, my parents didn't have that. So we were put into, um, I was put into um, Westway Crash, um, which I loved. I loved it there. Um, the matron of the home was Mrs. Peacock. She was a qualified matron of uh, children, nurse. She was a nurse. But because um, I think we had the same sort of colour and she was ginger and I was sort of gingery blonde, I suppose. Um, anyway, everyone thought we were mother and uh, mother and daughter. And Mother Peacock, I used to call her later in my life. She was fantastic with me. Um, I can't fault her. And when I left the home, the crash, and went to hook the going, I was horrified. And you were five it. then, were you? Is that true? Oh, right. Yeah. Yes, I was five years old. Um, I remember um, the warden, hard-nosed face woman, um, passing me some clothes that was going to be for the week. Um, she said this was going to be my weekly clothing. Um, and then there was a nice little dress that I could only wear on a Sunday. Anyway, she marched me to the um, where I was going to stay and sleep, which was a massive ward. I can only name it as a ward because there was rows and rows of beds, and each bed had a wardrobe next to it. Uh, the guy that rang Hope Logaran was um, uh, Torbrook. Uh, he was. Uh, he was, I found out later, known Fitz, I suppose, because he was a military man. He had been through the war. <coughs> Excuse me. He'd been through the war and he had learned to treat us like um, soldiers, I'll say. Um, we had to make our beds like it was, uh, like we were in the army. But anyway, he was a nasty piece of man. And um, in what way? In what way was he nasty? He was nasty. He would make you do things to him, um, and threaten you that you wouldn't have this. You wouldn't have the treat. You wouldn't have the. You would not have your parents, which was my mother see you for a long time he was just a nasty man this was sexual things you had to do i had to do them in order to um to have these favors as you call them because um he would never let us see my mother me see my mother and my mother walked from st hallia to st martin's and that's quite a walk, because in those days there was no buses. Um, so I I would do them knowing that I would not see my mother if I didn't. And how yeah. old were you when that kind of thing started? Five. Oh, straight away. Was he, he the man, Marina, was he the man who would carry a pillow around with yeah. him? Yes. What was the he pillow for? Oh, to shut you up, my dear. Um, he had his little weasel. A guy would 
have under his arm, I can't think of his name, but he followed him everywhere. He had like a clipperboard and uh, he would write down certain things on this clipperboard. I don't know, he followed them everywhere. Um, and Torbrook would use that pillow if you were to scream. He would cover your face. Um, thinking about it, I mean, I suffer with my breathing now, but as a child, we were terrified. Um, from the girls' dormitory, I told doctor, my doctor um, about this, where along the corridor from my dormitory, there was a room. It, was, it overlooked the field at the back of the home, and I had an arch window. And I had just, the room was big, huge. And thinking about it, it just had one bed in there. I remember going, being led there, giving some drink, a colonial steam alcohol, and led to this room. And then being brought back to the dormitory, only to be abused sexually in this room. Um, and I told my uh, counsellor about it so she investigated she wanted to see this room well, especially the window because it was an unusual window it was an arch window so I told her where it was so she took photographs of it she went to the home and took photographs of this window. And um, she was horrified. And I can tell you, the I told state, certain states members of secret doors that led to the basement of Hope de Baron, where there was a massive bath it was always summertime, I suppose, is the reason for that, the heat. But um, we, as kids, we were led down, down steps, believe it or not, to this basement and into bars. I can only describe old members or states, states members. I know you they, just, states members means people in the government. Yes, in the parliament. They, exactly. And I remember that they weren't, they were mainly farmers because I remember meeting one of them that worked in Grooville. He was a farmer in Grooville that came with um, Mr. Paynell, Teddy Paynell. And they used to bring vegetables and things to the home and even meat. Um, and Mr. Payne, I was often with one of the state's members that uh, used to bring this to us, yeah. So you'd to be led home. down into the cellars and there's a, a pool or a bath? Uh, no, it was like a big pool. Right. Um, uh, yeah, and we were put in into the pool by members of staff, mainly women, believe it or not. They would put us into the pool uh, amongst these men. So um, how many how many men were in the pool usually and how many children were put in the pool with them? It was about six to eight men that were in the pool. Um, but they had this chair, never forget, they had this chair um, that had, it was wooden, and they had where you rest your arms, you know, as a kid. Well, even now, I mean, it's a wooden chair with arms. Yeah. And they had straps to it. And if you refuse to go in the pool, they put you in this chair. They called it the naughty chair. And, and how were you trapped? How were you strapped? Were you... What was it, your hands well, strapped no, to the no, arms? Or... 
No, it was the ankles and the right. wrists. And were you wearing clothes at times like that? Because I just had a little, what we call frock dress um, on. Um, yeah, it was just something they could just take off. And if you're in the if you're in the pool, would you be wearing something? No. And would they be wearing anything? The men, you mean? The men, I mean. No, they never wore anything. And so, what would happen in the pool? Well, they the they had they were drinking um, and smoking. And is your um, memory of is your memory of that business going down into the cellar into the pool of it happening quite often? I do remember it quite often because mm. it was terrifying. Um, and I remember it wasn't just girls, it was boys yeah. as well. It wasn't just girls, it was boys. They often put us in there and I was often in the chair of them, um, which I would, would refuse to go into the pool. What would happen in the pool? Um, they used to make us sit on my laps. Well, not on my laps. On yeah, I suppose on my laps if they were in the pool. And um, what do you say, make you, Marina? Do you do you mean that they put you on the laps or that they they put you on the laps right. of these men? They they asked us to touch their private parts. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And did the staff members watch this going on or did they leave and, you know, go back upstairs? They went back upstairs, yes. Yeah. Mm. So, so when these, this situation comes to an end, what happens? I, I mean, do they come and get you, as the, get the children? Do they, is it kind of like a timed thing or? Yes, or? they come and get us, wrap oh. us house, look us off asleep. And um, I remember going to sleep after it. They would give us a drink and we would sleep, all asleep. What kind of a drink? Well, a, li a liquid drink. I, I mean, medicine type of drink or just kind of water? Like a medicine drink, oh, right. yeah. Who, who gave you um, that? The staff gave you that? Staff, yes, yeah. Do you think you were being drugged to go to sleep? Well, we were all the way through. What What makes you think you were being drugged? What was What was because, happening? Because we felt drowsy after. Um, yeah, we felt drowsy after. After going down into that pool? We were given alcohol by staff. Right. Um, uh, yeah. I remember the first time I was given alcohol by the staff, um, by staff, this is just memory, <coughs> was when I, it was 1966. You were how old? Six. Do you remember, Marina, whether this was the same men? who keeps returning or whether there was a constant stream of different men or a, a mixture, you, you know, how many kind of people are we talking about who might have been doing this to children when they attended Hope de la Garen? It was the same man. Um, one was a States member. He, he had a, a shop in Senehalia. And I remember the boys going there, but coming back, you knew, you knew by their faces what went on. Um, I came back from London, in about 13. <clears throat> and we come back from London and the girls were saying that they're going on this yacht. And Asked if I wanted to go, the staff members, you know, on this yacht, uh, not being able to swim anyway, and I didn't trust them. I said, no, um, I don't want to go. 
But when the girls came back, you knew something happened to them. They'd been abused. There was one girl, she disappeared now. If you were to interview any of the children, children from Hope the Gun, they'll tell you the same thing. We never saw her again. And I can see her now. She had been on this yacht. And she came back. She was she was not long at Hope the Garen. Um, she jumped out the window and I thought that's old because it's got a big height from our dormitory. It was quite a I'm saying the most about 12 feet. <coughs> we never saw her. You never saw her again. When I asked Charlie Smith, who was the head of the children's department, what happened to her, he said he didn't know. I said, but you're in charge of the department. Surely you would know. And he said, I don't know. I think she was fostered. But I think he knew mm. what happened to her and to the other children that disappeared. You've talked um, about being, you've been talked about being touched. Were you actually raped as well, Marina? Yes. At the home. Yeah. At what kind of age do you remember that happening? Around about eight years old. Hmm. Um, well, I was led up to that, I was made to do things to remember, mainly the staff, um, men members of the staff, we were made to do things. Us girls, the boys who were raped at all ages. Um, I remember one boy, he, he had blood in his pajamas and he, he must have been about six, say. And I asked him what happened and he wouldn't tell me, but I knew anyway. But I wanted to comfort him. He's now in a mental state. Always has been um, since. And I remember going out, looking out the window and seeing this person hanging from the tree. Hanging by the neck. Yeah. And did you say you were six at that point? Yes, I was six. I can see him now. It was a boy. He came from Irish parents. And it was the year that the football was on. In fact, we had a black and white TV in the big hall put up for the boys to watch football. Um, anyway, I went to investigate it and I was horrified because I was trying to push him up to help him out of the tree. I remember it clearly to our, to our die, I suppose. And I couldn't. So I went to the home and said that there was somebody swinging, explained as you do when you're that age. And I was told that he had, by the kids of the home, that he, he had killed himself. Tell us about the the beast of Jersey. What was what was tell us tell us about that? Jersey, he came to Hope Le Garen with his best pal, um, Le Mage, and they would bring things like vegetables that uh, the beast of Jersey would grow on his farm, and so would Le Mage bring out other items, mainly for the staff. Um, when Christmas came, that the Beast of Jersey would give us um, give us the presents that people of the island donated to us kids back in the day. Um, I was horrified because Santa Claus was a is a jolly, rosy cheeked guy, and he was ugly. Did he abuse you, Marina? Um, yes, he did. He did. 
um, uh, not not um, sexual, but felt mean places. That sounds um, sexual. It was sexual, but um, he was only caught. I don't don't. I remember he was only caught because he speeded through traffic lights and um, he stopped by the States of Jersey police. Now, this is not the honorary police officers. No. This is the States of Jersey. Yeah. He stopped and he searched. Um, that's where they found these items of... Uh, things that he had in his boot of his car. What kind of things? Well, he, he, had, uh, he had like a dog collar with you know, just kind of nails coming out of it. He had wristbands, the same thing, nails coming out. Quite sharp nails. Um, he just... Mm -hmm. Am I right? He came as Father Christmas. Did he wear a Father Christmas outfit? Or oh, he did. He did. I mean, I'm telling you now. He was, um, it was most ugly as Father Christmas had. Oh. <laughs> but, but he then also came as the Beast of Jersey wearing a yes, spiky I collar mean, and cuffs. Exactly, yeah. He, uh, well, once you see an ugly face, you don't forget it, do you? It is extraordinary. Was, was that his, uh, uh, funny question, Marina, but was that his actual face or did he have a mask? No, was, he, no, he didn't need to have one. He was ugly enough. Who else came to visit your home? Were there other celebrities uh, or? Jimmy, Jimmy Saffle, you know. He said he never came to, to Jersey. Oh, to Jersey. Jersey. Hmm. Um. Well, Jimmy Savile came in the 70s. Um, I remember him clearly. He was on Jimmy Fix It, or whatever they used to follow. And he came quite often because his mother was in a, a home that was run by the sisters' um, convent. He, he came to Hope McGowan because he wanted us to do the Easter charity walk um but he was abusive to to the girls he would uh, touch them sexually um and i i didn't like that when he my sister was sitting on his lap well we both were and he started touching us in certain places <clears throat> and i said to my sister let's go let's move and we did. But he denied ever going to Hovercombe. My sister uh, was photographed um, with Jimmy Savile on one of the fields that uh, was at the back of the home, the Hope Le Garen. Um, and he denied ever going to Hope Le Garen. He said that he never went there. But I remember that um, there was photographs taken and I told the police that he's in photographs with my sister and some of the teenagers from Hope the Garden because they all wanted to be on Jimmy Fix It. What happened to me, I've got to put behind me for the sake of my life. So that's what happened. I just put it behind me. and But my sister never did. She, she and my brother didn't. One of my brothers. They drank a lot. Um, they'd become alcoholics. My sister ended up in, in on the streets of Jersey. My brother, he drank a lot, but he had his painting, decorating business. So... That kept him off the streets, basically. My sister, I often pulled off the streets of St. Helia. Um, I said to her, you know, you've got to move from here. 
Anyway, she married a Jersey guy, but she found the booze was better than him. So she left him and went to Jersey, uh, England. She is now mm-hmm. living in, well, Bristol, but she got cancelled for throat. When did you leave Jersey? I left Jersey last year. When um, Gladwell came to Jersey, he asked me to um, to go and identify anything that um, was found at Hope the Goan. And I asked him about the, that call and that I led uh, certain state members to the basement of Hope the Goan. And he denied that it ever was there. And I said, well, what about the wall? We, as children, we wrote out, I couldn't read and spell very well, but I put my initials, MC, Marina Kramen was my name. And he denied anything, anything that he found. And I later found that he destroyed everything that was found at Hope the Goan. That's the police officer, isn't it, you're talking about? Officer, yes. He he was corrupt to the call, and you can recall this from Marina. And I told him, you're corrupt. You are a nasty piece of work, and you'll go to hell for what you've done. Now... It was a states member, I'm going to ask Michael his name, I can't remember his name. But he, he and, um, him and another person went to investigate this swimming pool um, that they used to put us in. And um, the states member said, well, you can't stand up mm. because in 1972, the Hope Lagoon had an extension built onto it to make it bigger, obviously. And um, the part that Hope Lagoon had the extension built on, you could not stand up to because the level of the ceiling was brought down. But the actual old building, you could. Mr. Torbrook went on to run a children's home for handicapped children, I believe, in Yorkshire. After he'd left Garen? He would have done, I think, the same to those, but who are they going to call? So did he go with a kind of clean bill of health then being given to him by by whoever employed him? Yeah, he was employed by the Children's Department, which was the States of Jersey Department. Right. Amazing. Now, he he went on, I found out later by the police, to run a children's home for the mentally handicapped. 